Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use SQL to create macro variables to make your coding more efficient. Because SQL is great for aggregating, it's a great tool for generating lists. In each example, I'm going to show you how to create the macro variable, then show you how the variable can be used. We're going to start simple, then get progressively more complex. In this video, we're going to be working with the cars data set. You can see it has multiple categories like make and type and origin and good numeric data like these price columns and these miles per gallon columns. So let's get into it. So the way that you assign a value to a macro variable in SQL is using this into clause. So in this example, we're going to assign the maximum MSRP to this max MSRP macro variable. And like I said, we're going to grab this from sashelp.cars and then we're going to put that value to the screen. So you can see that our into clause also has a colon before the macro variable that completes the syntax. To print our macro variable value to our log, we have to use this put statement with this percentage in front of it. And when you call a macro variable, you use this ampersand in front of it. So I'll show you how this works. You can see that because we're using a select statement, the max, maximum value outputs to our results tab. But if we look at our log, we see the maximum value right here as well from our put statement. So our maximum value is 192,465. If we go to our cars data set and sort by MSRP, we see that the maximum value is 192,465. In block two, I added this no print option right here. This prevents this SQL code from outputting to our results. It'll still go to the log, but we won't have any results in our results tab. See results is blank, log shows our value. And now we're gonna use this macro variable in our data step. In our data step, you can see that we're keeping the record with the MSRP equal to our maximum value. Again, we're using this ampersand in front of our macro variable. So this is like saying, if MSRP is equal to 192,465. So let's run this code. Look at our output. We see our value here and we can see it belongs to a Porsche. Now in reality, if all we're doing is something this simple, then there are easier ways to isolate this record. However, this can be useful if, for example, we were using the data step for more in-depth data manipulation, and this macro variable was just a piece of that code. So what if instead of assigning the highest price to the macro variable, we wanted to assign the make of the car with the highest price? In our data set, that's a Porsche. So we do that in, in example two by assigning the make column to the macro variable max make and adding a having clause MSRP equals max MSRP. Again, we're outputting our macro value to the log. So let's run this. So you can see that as we expected, Porsche was added to our macro variable. Now in our data step, instead of MSRP equal to the value of macro variable max MSRP, now we have make equals the value of macro variable max make. And because make is a character type column, SAS is expecting the value to appear inside quotes. And because our macro value, Porsche, does not include quotes, we need to include quotes around our macro variable. Double quotes have a special purpose in the SAS macro language. They tell SAS to apply the value of our macro variable. Single quotes would tell SAS to apply the literal text of the macro variable name and the ampersand rather than the value. If we did that, our data set would be empty because there are no makes named ampersand max make. So let's run this. Now we see in our output that our new data set is limited to Porsche. Alternatively, we could add the quotes to our select statement to embed the quotes in our macro variable value. Notice that I removed the quotes around our macro variable in our data step. So let's run these together. So our output shows the same results. But when we look at our log, we see that Porsche 
is encased in quotes. Embedding the quotes in a macro variable is perhaps a more useful method for character strings, as you'll see when we get to macro variable lists in example four. In example three, we create two macro variables in the same SQL block, max make and max MSRP. As usual, you include a comma between two columns in our select clause, and also you include a comma in our into clause to differentiate our macro variables. Otherwise, the code is the same as in the previous example. You see I added both macro variables to our put statement so we can see the values in the log. Notice this time I added a format to MSRP in the select clause, stripping all formatting. Because in this context, the max MSRP value appears in a dollar format. And because MSRP is a numeric field, we would have gotten an error if our numeric value appeared in the data step with a dollar sign and commas. This is why it's important to put the value to the log to verify we're getting what we expected. But if our needs were different, we could leave it in the dollar format or change the format to something else that meets our needs. So let's run this. So you can see the record return was the one with the highest MSRP and the make with the highest MSRP, which was Porsche. And if we look at our log, we see that max make was Porsche and max MSRP was 192,465. Our goal in example four is to generate a data set containing makes that have at least one car over $85,000. Because make is a character type, we're embedding quotes around our values, like we did in example two. You can see in our where clause that we're saying where MSRP is greater than $85,000. This time we're using a where clause instead of a having clause because we're referencing MSRP, which is not a column created in this SQL statement. Because more than one make meets the $85,000 criteria, you'll notice the into clause contains a separated by space. This means we're creating a list of values rather than a single value. We don't have to use a space here. We could use anything else, such as a comma or a pipe, depending on our needs. For our purposes, we need spaces. Lastly, you'll notice the select clause includes the keyword distinct before make, so that any one make appears in our list just once. Otherwise, for example, if Porsche had two models greater than $85,000, then Porsche would appear in our list twice. So let's run this block. So you can see that our list includes four makes separated by a single space. Each is enclosed in quotes. Our data step includes the in operator, which takes a list of values. And in this case, it's the four makes included in our macro variable. So let's run this. And as we expected, we see all the models from the makes included in our list. In example five, we're generating a list of variables we want to include in an array. Specifically, we're gonna use the upcase function in the data step to change all text values in our cars data set to uppercase. First, we use proc contents to output a list of columns and column types to a data set we named cars vars. Usually proc contents outputs to the results tab, but if you add an out equals, and name the new data set. You can output it to a data set you can use. So let's run proc contents. You can see that we now have a list of columns in the car's data set, along with their type. Columns with one are numeric, and type two are character. In this SQL statement, we're storing a list of columns from our car's data set, where the type is character. We only need the character columns because the numeric ones can't be set to uppercase. Also, an array can't include columns of mixed data type. They have to be all character or all numeric. Like last time, we're separating our values with a space. So let's run this. So the log shows five column names were stored in our macro variable. So in our data step, our array is named strings and it includes columns included in our macro variable. We use a do over statement to apply our upcase function to all columns in our array. So let's run this code. So you can see that all of our text values are now in uppercase. 
There are a lot of uses for this. I use this a lot to standardize data, such as making alt text uppercase or lowercase or proper case. But I also routinely use it to remove leading and trailing spaces from text. If that's what I needed to do, then I'd replace the upcase function in this example with the strip function. In this last example, I wanted to show you a useful and automatic macro variable named SQL obs. This is created in SAS automatically when an SQL query is run and includes the number of observations or rows returned in the query. For example, the code shown here is the same as the one we saw in the previous example, except I added a let statement to assign the value of the automatic macro variable SQL obs to n vars. You don't necessarily need to use this let statement, but SQL obs will be overwritten the next time an SQL block is run. The macro variable in the let statement won't be overwritten. In our data step, instead of using a do over for our array, we now have a do loop that iterates from 1 to 5 because n vars holds the value 5. This is a little more versatile than the do over loop. For example, column name 2 is set to lowercase while the other character columns are set to uppercase. I use SQL obs value frequently for iterating through values in macro programming. It's a little too complex for this video, but I plan to demonstrate this in another video. So let's run this code. So you can see that make was set to lowercase. Make was a second column in our macro variable list. The rest of the columns were set to uppercase. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you saw how using SQL to create macro variables and macro variable lists can improve the efficiency of your coding. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.